Hello everyone, I'm Brady with OWC, and today we're gonna to be talking about the brand new 2020 Mac Mini with Apple's M1 chip. Right here, we have the base model with the eight core CPU, the eight core GPU, eight gigs of unified RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. We're gonna see what's inside the box, we're gonna do a quick teardown, and then we're gonna reassemble it again for some basic benchmarking. Without further ado, let's open this box up. With the box open and everything spread out, let's take a look and see what we got. On this side here, we have a two-pronged power cable. Over here, we have the Apple sticker and documentations. And then in the middle, we have the Mini itself. Overall, the body is pretty much the same as previous generation Mac Minis. But on the back is where we see some differences. Over here, we have the, the power cable connector right next to the Gigabit Ethernet. Next to that, we have two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports with an HDMI 2.0 port. Then we have two USB-A ports with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack below that. And then we have a big old vent here for the fan. That being said, let's now open it up and take a look on the inside. All right, everyone, we actually went ahead and opened this up for you, spread everything out so you could get a good look. Uh, there actually isn't a whole lot of components in here. It's very simple, even though there's a lot going on. The case itself, pretty similar to, actually it's almost identical to earlier versions of Mac Minis, same, same dimensions. You do have a nice little channel in here for cable management for the uh, power supply cable. This right here is the entire power supply. Roughly the same size as previous Mac Minis as well. Here you can see the cooling system on here. You got a nice big heat sink that sits on the, uh, the M1 chip itself with a nice fan and a, and a shroud to vent all that air out the back. And then here is the logic board itself. First right here, you can see the speaker. Underneath this speaker here, you got a couple of the Wi-Fi antenna. Third one attaches right there and that goes to the lid on the case. Over here, we have two of the storage modules. In the middle here, we have that big, beautiful Apple M1 chip with the Apple logo. Right here, we have the two unified memory modules. We do have the eight gigabyte version, so each module is four gigabytes there. On the other side here are Apple branded chips. Unfortunately, I'm unsure of what those are at this time. On the side here, we have all the ports, Thunderbolt ports, USB ports, HDMI ports. All right, let's go ahead and flip this over and get a look on the back side. On the back side here, although we don't have all the chips as we did on the front, we still have a lot going on. On this here, there was actually a black piece of tape just like these that were removed to get a better idea as to what's going on. The chip is labeled USI, which is similar to Apple's U1 chip, but unfortunately I'm not positive as to what exactly that chip does at this time. Underneath these two black pieces of tape here, there's a similar cage to these, but there's actually only transistors and capacitors underneath there. It's more than likely there to prevent contact with these tabs. And that's it for a look on the inside. Let's go ahead and uh, reassemble all this so we could run some benchmarks. So after we reassembled this, we ran some benchmarks. We ran three basic tests to test out the CPU, GPU, and the SSD. For the CPU, we used Geekbench. This actually had the Apple Silicon architecture built into the tests already. For that, we are able to achieve a single core score of 1555 and a multi-core score of 5871. On the GPU side of things, we ran Unigen Valley 2013 edition. We used ultra settings with four times anti-aliasing. We used a 4K monitor for that, but we had the resolution in the test set to 1080p. For that, we achieved a frame rate of 26 and a half frames per second and a score of 1108. And then finally, on the SSD side of things to test the transfer speeds, we used Aja. With that, we achieved a read of 2726 and a write of 1932 megabytes per second. And those were the test results on our 2020 Mac Mini. So that's been our quick overview of the 2020 Mac Mini with the M1 chip. We took a quick look inside the box, we opened up the Mac Mini to see what was inside, and we ran some basic benchmarks on the CPU, GPU, and SSD. Overall, this is looking to be a solid start for the M1 chip and Apple Silicon. That being said, I'm Brady with OWC. Thanks for watching, and have a good day, everyone.